Arizona Sweep. Turns it up. Hey coaches, I hope you all are doing well. Hope you all are staying safe, staying healthy. I've had several coaches reach out to me the last couple of weeks asking us for content on, you know, how we call plays, play calling strategy, play calling philosophy, things like that. Um, I think it's important to start off saying, um, you know, we, we do have a three pillar strategy. Okay, we base our play calling on basically on three things. And I think it's important to start with, you know, you need a you need a structured attack, a series of plays. You need plays that complement each other. Like if you're a power team, you know, the first play you're going to install is power, right? Then you're going to have counter. Then you're going to have a power pass or some kind of play action. You know, like you'll have plays that set up other plays and you'll add tags to different plays so you could still run those plays if the defense is committed to stopping it. So I think it's important to have the ability to, you know, have a play off of your best play and a pass off of your best play. So this pillar, this three pillar strategy doesn't really work unless you have a you know, a series of plays, a system we run. Like we're we're a jet wing T, our, we're a jet sweep team. So a lot of what we do in our wing T stuff is off jet sweep. Okay, and, and this stuff does a, can apply to any offense, any formation, whatever you're running. So I'll go through my three pillars and some other little coaches coaching points. Okay, and we also have a I have some game film for you. Okay, so I want to start off with this. As an offensive coordinator, it's our job to call a play that gives our players. So excuse any little errors here. I literally just typed this up and, you know, started recording this video. And if you want this small presentation, just let me know. I could email it to you. I'm going to clean it up, make it a little more professional looking and check for any errors. But, um, you know, as offensive coordinators, okay, it's our job to get a play in. That'll give our kids the best chance of success based on the defense, you know, what we're seeing, what they're doing, how they're reacting. And for us, it's we're basing everything off numbers, leverage, and um, where we have the player advantage, and also, you know, how they're adjusting to our jet sweep action. Now, have a system to run. Oh, my God. Sorry about that. Have a system to run. Don't just call plays. Okay? Like I said, you need a system of plays. If the team wants to come out and stop your power, run counter. Okay, if they want to come out, stop your jet sweep, you can run counter, you can run jet power, you know, or wedge. I'll show you. I have clips of all that. OC doesn't call the offense himself. This is an important one, too. Okay, you need, as a play caller, okay, I have a coach that's been with me for a long time. Okay, he calls the plays, but I watch a lot of the defense, so we kind of work together. I don't really think, you know, offensive coordinator is a, a single job, you know, to, to, to be a true to coordinate an offense successfully and really be, you know, an offensive coordinator, you got to have a team around you. You know, we have a coach that watches just how to react to motion. We have a coach that watches the safety. Okay, is he in the middle of the field? Is he rolling down with our motion? What is he doing? Are they putting him a minimum play player there? So maybe we throw, you know, things like that. And, and you know, I watch a lot what the defense does post-snap, and then I relay that to um, – you know, our offensive coordinator. So I think it's important to have people watch certain things. Have a coach watch for when they sub in minimum play players, run at them, right? Most leagues have minimum play rules. Not all, but most. So, you know, have a coach, do your film study, and then, you know, go from there. But, you know, running an offense isn't a one-man job if you truly run a call play strategically and not just guess, okay? Because... You know, you, you could call a play, just say, okay, let's try a sweep here because it's second and long. If the defense is, okay, well, maybe they're going to try a sweep or a pass, so let's let's align to defend that stuff. And so what do you do? You just run right into it? And that's another thing, too. You need to have the ability to change the play, which is the last point. I probably should have this up here, but I'll get to that in a second. Obviously, you want to understand down distances. Now, you know, there's a lot that goes into it. That could be a whole nother video in itself, play calling and understanding down and distances. For example, with us, if it's third and 10, okay, or third and 15, jet sweep's our best play. So if we fake jet sweep on a down and distance where you could run jet sweep or some kind of outside play or some kind of pass, okay, we'll run jet sweep action and we'll run wedge. And, and if we know we got two plays to get 
you know, 15 yards, like I said, say it's third and 15, we have two plays to get 15, we don't all, we don't need it all right away. So if the defense comes out and is aligned to stop our jet sweep or a power or a reverse, you know, they're stacking the outside, maybe we run wedge. And I'll show you a great example of that on the game film once we get there. So understand where you are on the field, you're down to distances. If you need, if you know you're going for it on fourth down, you don't need to force the 15 right away. You know, a lot of times on third and long, we'll run wedge. We'll run our jet power because they think it's jet sweep or our post wheel off of jet sweep. So a lot of times they're aligned to stop sweep or they sub in a weaker nose guard or a weaker D tackle because they don't think we're running inside to get them as plays. And then boom, we run inside. So understand down the distances. If you got two plays to get a first down, don't force it. So understand down the distances and where you are on the field. Just have an understanding of that. You know, like they say, stay ahead of the chains, you know, and, and it's never a bad idea to run when they think you're going to pass. Or pass when they think you're going to run, you know. So being unpredictable is a good thing, too. Have all the coaches on the same page. Okay, this kind of goes with what I said before, the offensive. The OC doesn't call the offense himself. Okay, have the coaches on the same page. Get your offensive staff together. Have them watch a position. And then they could relay all the information and what they're seeing to the offensive quarter. Because one guy can't watch it all. So, have you know, have the coaches all on the same page. Assign them a job to watch. Have someone there to count the box, okay? If you get a weak box, okay, say, hey, we got a weak box here. So then maybe, um, you know, we'll get to this point now, actually, because it ties right into what I was about to say. Have the ability to change the play, okay? So if you have the ability to change the play at any time, we have risk coaches. Our kids have, every coach has a risk, uh, every coach and player has a risk coach with our plays. So we have the ability to change our play any time. If I call jet sweep and they come out, they're aligned to stop it. We're not going to run into a wall where we don't have the numbers of leverage. If they're widening out for jet sweep, that means we'll, we'll either have the numbers advantage inside or the leverage advantage inside. So we make one call and we'll change it. Then we'll change the play. And that's being an efficient play caller. You know, a lot of coaches will call plays or call sweep to their best athlete, and the defense is aligned to stop it, but they got a better athlete that bails them out. How many times do you see that? You know, they're not they're not true play callers. They're having athletes bail them out, but that, that's a whole nother thing. And, I, and I've had several teams where we had a great athlete that bailed us out too, you know, so it helps. You know, you don't need to be a great play call when you have better athletes. But, you know, in these tough, close games, this is the stuff when it's a level playing field, this is the stuff that's going to be the difference. Like I said, have the ability to change the play. It doesn't have to be a risk coach. I said we use it. That's just what we do. You could have one word play calls. Sometimes we do that as well. Okay, I, I, I prefer the risk coach because – you know, if they hear, like, we our wedge play, the check to wedge was called Washington. So they hear that once on film or they see, they know. So it's kind of like a one-shot deal. That's why I like going off the wrist coach because we're able to kind of hide our, you know, our coding of the play is, is simple for our kids, but there's no way the defense will figure it out. And, and I'll link, um, I'll put a link in the description to our no huddle play calling system. Okay, that's a clinic I did for you guys. It, it, it's awesome. I highly recommend it. Like I said, I'll put a link in the description and maybe um, a link to it at the end, end of this video. All right, but let's get into the meat of this, okay? Three pillars. We want to attack where you have the numbers advantage. We want to attack where you have leverage advantage. We want to attack where you have player advantage. And again, I can't stress how important this is. If you have the ability to change the play, you, you're, you're really going to have a better chance of success because, you know, this is easy to say, but if the defense comes out, and adjusts or does something to where you're running in to where they have numbers advantage. You have no ability to change the player. You're just wasting it down. So it's important to have a system of play, see how they're reacting to your base play, and then call a compliment. Attack where you have the numbers advantage. Outnumber the defense to a side or an area. Run there. I mean, it's it's really that simple. If you have five blockers, they have four defenders, you're in good shape. You have three. You have three blockers. I only have two. You're in good shape. They have three defenders. You have three blockers. You're still in good shape. It's even numbers. You know, running at even numbers. As long as everyone does their job, you know, you should win. But um, you know, run where you have the numbers advantage. So many times, you know, teams will just run into where they're outnumbered or out leveraged. Okay, and then the play's dead. So run where you have the numbers advantage, and have a coach watching their defense, writing down their alignment, so you know and can make adjustments. Utilize unbalanced formations. The best way to create number advantages is going with unbalanced formations. Defenses do 
one of two things. Okay, they either shift, over shift usually, or they don't. They don't adjust at all. So you'll see on our videos too, we, we sneak a tight end over a lot. We trade. Okay, we utilize shifts and tight end trades where we'll flip the strength and make them shift. And they'll either won't shift or they'll over shift. That's usually what happens. But utilize unbalance, unbalanced lines, okay? Because most of the time the defense doesn't, you know, they'll either over shift or they won't shift at all. Or they won't align properly. You know, they'll leave a gap open or, open or something like that. Utilize shifts and trades, okay? That That's something um, we have to do a lot more of. I'm just thinking out loud here with my team. We, we need to utilize more shifts and trades. You'll see some of the trades in the video, but we need to shift more, and we will this season. All right, be multiple while keeping things simple for your players. Be multiple, uh, multiple will create alignment conflicts for the defense. Same play, several different formations. Now, the best way to create numbers advantage, okay, is by going with multiple formations. And, I, and I'm saying run the same plays that your kids know and that you got installed already, just do them different ways. Run them out of several different formations. For example, we have a balanced formation where we run all our plays out of. Then we have an unbalanced formation where we run pretty much all the same plays out of. And then we have more of a spread formation. It is a spread formation where we run pretty much the same plays. So it's simple for your kids. But it allows you to be multiple and it forces the defense to have to adjust properly to multiple formations. You know, it's very easy to install formations. So have multiple formations and just run the same stuff out of it. It's really that simple. That's the best way to create numbers advantage and leverage advantage as well. So utilize some shifts, some trades, and be multiple. Just run the same plays that the kids know and are comfortable with and just run them different out of different formation. It's really that easy. Attack where you have the leverage advantage, okay? Attack where your blockers have the leverage advantage. It's much easier to block down or kick out. Use our leverage against them, okay? I love down blocking. I'm a big gap scheme guy, okay? I'm not I'm not saying I hate zone blocking. I'm just, in my opinion, I think it's um, it's much easier to, to gap block, you know, especially, or down block rather, gap schemes, okay? I mean, so many times we'll down, down kick pretty much on every play we do. Just think about it. Down blocking is great because the defensive linemen, okay, they're 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 down on three point stance. Their head's looking at the ball, so that offensive lineman that's outside, they're not even going to see that coming. They're just going to shoot up field and then boom, we're going to wash them down. So and down blocking is great if you're not, you know, if they have superior size or athletes, you know, down block on them. Okay, no one won't even see it coming. Same thing with the kick out. Okay, a lot of times though, we kick out the D end or the outside linebacker most of the time. So you know those DNs and linebackers, depending on the defense, they're taught to box or contain. So we just kick those kids out and come right underneath it. So down blocks and kickouts are great for leverage, okay? Even if you don't have too much of numbers advantage, if it's even, say it's four on four, four blockers versus four defenders. As long as you work, as long as you're accounting for all four, it doesn't matter who's blocking who, okay? Down, down, kick is what we like to do pretty much on everything. Okay, system of plays help gain that gain that leverage advantage, and you'll see you'll see on the game film how much um, having a system that works off jet sweep gives us the leverage advantage. I mean, teams just widen so much in an effort to stop jet, and then when we come underneath it with jet power, or wedge, or counter, or, or reverse buck, okay, they just get gutted. Now, formation shifts and trades help gain leverage as well, just like with the numbers advantage I talked about. Formation shifts and trades help gain leverage because if they're misaligned, maybe a kid's too wide, maybe he's not wide enough. So that'll give you, you know, if you force entire defense to move, but when you're just trading one tight end from the left to the right, you only move in one person, you're changing the strength. Sometimes we will shift too, but you know, you're only mo moving one or two players. That's forcing the defense to have to adjust multiple players. You know, they got to readjust the strength of their defense. You know, if they're putting a three tech to the, to the strength, you're forcing both D tackles to shift. So, I mean, you know, it, it's, you know, formation shifts are great in youth football and are very underutilized. So, um, shift around and you'll, you'll see the defense miss a line. Or they won't shift at all and then you shift and you just run where you have numbers. Leverage doesn't mean just pre-snap. That's, that is why and i'm sorry this is like a five-year-old wrote it but um i just put it together real quick and started shooting this this is why we run the jet sweep system 
Okay, leverage, and this is very big point here. Okay, you could see, you could come out and see the defense, okay, pre-snap you have them beat, but that doesn't mean, you know, they won't do something different post-snap. For example, they say they have a wide defensive end. Okay, let me draw this up for you. This is what we do a lot, actually, when I'm defensive corner, uh, coordinator. Sorry. I haven't used this program in a while. I apologize. Bear with me here. Here we go. I think we're good now. Yeah. Okay, say we come out. Okay, here's our tight end and our wing. And it looks like a five year old drew this, too. Sorry. Okay, pre snap. They come out. Okay, we got the edge advantage. We'll seal here. We'll crack with our split end. This is usually what we do on Jet Sweep. Okay, and he'll look to cut off the mic. Okay, but say pre-snap, they come out like this. Okay, so we got jet, we got leverage on these two guys. That doesn't mean, okay, he won't slant down here and he loops wide. So he's going to carry him with him down. He's going to squeeze the down block of the tight end and he's pretty much going to be free. So just because they're not doing something, you know, just because they're aligned a certain way pre-snap doesn't mean they're going to, that's the gap there. It looks like they're responsible for post-snap. Okay, so it's important to have a coach watch. That's why I love the jet sweep. Because you know what? Just check my time here. 16 minutes. I move it along here. But um, that's why we use jet sweep. Because when we send that jet motion to that side, it forces the defense to adjust or we're going to gain the edge. Okay, so a lot of times we have to, they're forcing them to play their hand. Okay, so how they handle our jet motion will tell us a lot what we do. Okay, they may be balanced or we may outnumber them, but depending what they do with their motion, and I have a great video for that, um, a highlight for that too, to show you that. So, but, um, you know, have a coach watch how they're reacting to your motion or to whatever you do post snap too. Attack where you have the player advantage. This is very easy. Okay, this one will breeze through this one. Scout, scout, scout. Okay, we, we, we spend a lot of time scouting and breaking down film. Okay, the first thing we look for is basically when we're looking at their defense is where who are their minimum play players, where do they play them, and when do they like to play them. Like, for example, we had a team last year that on third and long, they would take out all their interior linemen and just get a play in, which is a good idea. So that's why running wedge on third and long was actually really big for us. So once we see that, we're able to attack that. So scout, no, they say number 45, who isn't very good, comes in at D-tackle. They put them at nose. That's what a lot of teams do. They'll put them at safety, nose, or split end. Especially teams with a lot of kids that have to get these kids their place. You know, a lot of times they'll use them at nose or they'll put them at safety or something. So see where they're putting their weaker players and then attack it. So have a coach look, okay? Number 45's in. Let's run at them, okay? Sounds mean, but hey, you know, we're trying to win and score points here. Have coaches watch for sub-ins. That's just what I said. Okay, see where they are. When, when the kids come in, getting your player, getting your best players in space. Good athletes almost always have the advantage in space. So we talked a lot about leverage and um, leverage and numbers advantage. But at the end of the day, like I said, um, if you got a good athlete, get him in space. Because even if they have a plus one on you, like one defender, extra versus your blockers, if you have a good athlete, that you don't need another blocker. So, you know, you don't want to be too cute. If you got a good athlete, get him the ball in space, whether it's bubble screens, swing screens, slip screens, you know, what now screen, whatever you got to do to get jet sweeps, rocket sweeps. If you got your athlete, get him in space. Okay, so it, it's, you know, it's that simple. Attack where you're better. Okay, this is what we do a lot. This does stand out on film. But at the end of the day, even if they know it's coming, when we force them to shift their entire defense or have players follow our players, Okay, a lot of times that creates a misalignment for them, which is works in our favor and we'll end up having numbers or leverage advantage. So sometimes we don't do it every time, but we will switch our best linemen to a certain side when we need a play and we're going to run behind. That's just like getting your athletes the ball in space, right? Get your playmakers the ball in field, run behind your linemen, your best linemen when you need to play. It's literally the same thing, just a different position. So, you know, we follow that philosophy with our athletes and we want to run to our best linemen. Okay. Best players, best play. That That's, you know, when in doubt, best player, best play. Make the defense recognize and adjust. Like I said, a lot of times they don't shift properly, okay? So um, anytime you're trading or, or swapping players around, um, you know, it's, it's good and it's 
which stress it really stresses the defense. All right, right here you're going to see. Okay, this is our beast formation. Okay, we run. You're going to see a lot of our beasts, and you're going to see our jet stuff. Okay, our beast formation. This was early in the game, first and ten. It's the first time we ran this. Okay, we hit a big jet sweep, and then we went right back to our um, our beast formation here. Okay, we're going to come out. Get my little pen out. We got one, two, three, four. We have one, two, three, four, and here's the ball carrier. Okay, this kid is literally over to guard, so he actually doesn't even matter. If we really, and, and what's great about what we do, every play, if we get three kids blocked, we got to play. All we got to do is block. If we get this kid blocked, this kid blocked, this kid blocked, okay, we got to play. So we'll run this through. Let's see. The members advantage. Okay, they roll down what they did. They roll down this safety late. So we got four on four. Skip them and boom. I mean, you could see pre snap. They have a voided gap here. This kid's coming down late. Okay, they have a corner up in their DN here. So they just, this team would have just threw everyone on the line. But you can see we have the numbers advantage here. There's only, there's pretty much five of us on there four. Okay, so we have our tight end. Oops. We have our tight end here. A wing back here, wing back here. That's three and a lead blocker four. So one, two, three, four on four. We're good to go. And then come out field. That's fine. We just wash them and boom, get a play here. Okay, this is what I was saying about running where you have the numbers advantage post-snap. Okay, you could see this kid. He was coming down. Okay, so the defense is somewhat balanced here. Okay, but we saw that whenever we came in motion, they were taking this kid who was their best player, and this was our best player, and they were rolling, and he was coming down hard that way. Okay? So you could see as soon as he triggers motion, he, they have no C gap player. They have one end and a corner. They have no C gap player. Okay, so we're gonna have one, two, three, pulling both guards. Four, five. We actually have our two back go out and we block. Sometimes he'll fake jet this way, or we'll pull and, and and have him get even another extra blocker. So this is what I was talking about: numbers advantage post snap, and we won't, you know, us triggering. You know, us going in motion will trigger them to react. They have to, or this kid's going to beat them to the edge. So you could see, boom, they shift. Look, post-snap, right? As soon as the motion starts, post-snap, boom, they're flowing the motion. All of them are flowing the motion. So we got a lot of numbers here. You got one corner standing here and one DN here. Another issue, too. This is our reverse buck. Okay, our tight end needs to go right here. He blocked the guy we're, we're logging. Just two on one isn't good. So a little some point there. You know, we want to log him. He should have been coming right down here to the mic. But you could see, look at how the motion influences him. Okay, we got our guard out here. Should have our tight end right here, but we got two on one here. But even with two on one, you can see the numbers advantage we have. We got two basically on one. Okay, now remember this play, I'm pretty sure. I don't know why he cut this in. Let's keep going outside. He runs right into him. This is earlier in the season, so you know he's got to go outside. But um, you know you get the you get the concept here. If this kid goes outside, we score or get much bigger much bigger yards. I know he saw a crease here, and this kid's pressing the outside shoulder, but we still need to run away from them. Cutting inside here gives them less ground they got to cover. So he's got to get right behind this four and then cut off his block. If he has to cut in off his block, great. If not, you know, you cut outside. But he needs to be right behind the four. He's not cutting in. He's running to them. He's running to them, not to where we have blockers. So that's not a good play. It is a good play, but it's not. It's a good play schematically. Execution-wise, you know, this needs to be better. But you see how motion influences them, especially early on. Look at this. You know, we got a great jet sweep fake to our best player, and they're selling out to it. So we got a nice play here. All right, coaches, here's a nice little trade. Okay, we actually put our tight end away, 
and then we had him switch to this side. So we were unbalanced, right? We had a four-man surface to the right with two wings to the left, and then we just switched, and we had a three-man line surface to the left and three-man surface to the right, so we were balanced up here. Okay, so we'll see after he trades. They don't do anything. The only thing they did, like I said, they either adjust to it or they don't. Okay? We have a tight end here. Tackle's gonna, this kid's playing inside shade on our tackle. He's in the four eye. So we're just gonna base down on him. So that leaves us with one, two, three, four on three. Numbers advantage. Okay? And even if we didn't have the tight end trade back here, we still had three on three. So we were good either way. But um, now we had that plus one for us. Okay, so you could see how a simple trade, now we get four on three. All right, I'll run this through. That's pretty good. We get outside here. It's a nice play. Outside. Outside, outside. Side. Yeah, maybe we should work more on <laughs> ball carrier pass and a lot less on play calling. But um, okay, you can see we have the leverage advantage here. Okay, we're running outside. Basically, on our jet sweep, we are going to crack. Oops. Sorry. One sec. Get my little tool. Crack here. Marsh here, here, two bags offset. We're going to tunnel the corner. So we got one. He's got to square up his stance, too. One, two, three, four. They have three. So we have the numbers advantage and the leverage advantage. Okay, their D ends on the inside shade of our wing. So we have a great seal angle here. Okay, he's going to shoot this gap. A lot of times we go a little wider to bait him into shooting it, and we just wash him down. So we kind of baited him into shooting this, this grass here. Okay, we'll tell him to go max split, and that tells him to take go a little bit wider and baits these kids to take an inside path. Okay, so there's their contained player. You know, he's he's getting out leveraged. Okay, you know, and we're tackle over here. Technically, it's our tight end because he's a good blocker too. He's almost like another tackle. So technically, it's not tackle over, but if we didn't have a tight end that could do it, it would be tackle over. We put our true tackle there and our tight end there. So, but I'll, I'll just we'll say it's tackle over, okay? And then yeah, this will be your tight end. So you can see we have the leverage and numbers advantage. We got a nice down block angle here, great leverage here, a wash down here, great angle here. And we got a tunnel of the corner, great angle here. So we get the down down kick, just like I talked about. He shoots in, wash down, tunnel, boom. He's got a hit. He's got to get hash number sidelines and go score a touchdown here. All right, guys, here's another um, is out of our gun T. We're a tackle over here, okay? It's uh, technically our tight end. Again, we had another kid this year that could do it well, so we didn't have to bring the tackle over. We would just tell the tight end we would call this heavy. This is, in our, this is our gun T offense. We do have a playbook available for this. I'll put it in... Um, like a card or, or a little drop down up here. But I'm um, pretty sure this is jet sweep, okay? We got a great seal here. We got a great angle to crack here. And we got a great angle to tunnel the corner. And then this kid, we got to make miss. So you can see we got one, two, three, four on one, two, three. Okay, so we're in good shape here. Look at the blocking angles. We get the wash down here. I see the back of his jersey. Great. We get a nice... Crack block here, and we get a nice tunnel of the corner. This is beautiful. Boom. I see their numbers. They're sealing off the outside. Great job. Beautiful play. You can see, guys, we, not only do we have the leverage, great leverage here, great leverage here, and a great le leverage on our, on our kickout or tunnel, we call it. Okay, we, we have numbers advantage too. We got four on three, and our four have excellent blocking angles. So it's a, this is beautiful. Beautiful play right here. All right, this is where we have the player advantage, okay? 
this is their best player. Okay, he is in the middle. These two kids are good. They're three best players at linebackers. They never took him off the field. But you can see, we saw, okay, on first down, a lot of times they take this nose guard, their starting nose guard out, and they put in this minimum play player and this minimum play player away from our strength. Okay, so our strength is to the right. So this tells me, you can see their ends are wider. Okay, their corners pressed up and their outside backers are wider. So when they're putting their weak minimum play players, getting them their plays here, guess what we're going to call? We're going to call wedge. We're going to run inside on them. That's what we're going to do. Okay, so um, let me clear this off the screen. We are going to run wedge and it's probably going to do well. Look how this kid can't even get in a good stance. You know, he's a minimum play player. So they want to put him in now. Sneak him his place, thinks we don't notice. And then what do we do? Look at him. He's running backwards. And jet motion influences this kid to run. This is our best player. And this is their best player. So and there's no and this wedge is so nasty because we offset to the jet sweep or the jet action side. And there's no other threat. So all their eyes are locked on here. If our two back was directly behind the set, behind the quarterback, okay, and then lead blocking. They would have eyes. Some kids would watch him. So putting him off to the play side, they're not ready for the QB wedge. There's no one else to look at but the motion. Okay, and they're going to lose our little quarter. You'll see our quarterback was small, but he was a really, really good athlete. But you could see, boom, weak players. We run wedge. We break the wedge, cut off the backer. Beautiful play here. It was a big physical team we played, and we just out-schemed them. Put in the weaker kids. Jet motion influences them to widen. Boom, beautiful wedge. We broke, cut off the outside backers, and scored a touchdown. A beautiful play. Okay, this is Jet Power. Okay, this was later in the series. Okay, this was actually the next the next drive. We gutted them big with Jet Sweep. That wedge scored, but how we got at their 35-yard line, I think it is, was on a big Jet Sweep. Okay, so we got up there by Jet Sweep on first down. It was a big Jet Sweep for, down for us. So this is a big jet sweep down for us. Okay, so this is where we have le leverage and player advantage. You can see they're starting nose guards back in, but this kid's still in. So we're like, okay, he's staying at right tackle. We're gonna, they're not going to put him to the wide side of the field. They're putting him to the boundary because we don't run jet too much to the boundary, which we don't. We started doing that more, but um, you know they put him to the boundary, I guess, for whatever reason. But he was still in, so, man, we're going to attack him. We saw, okay... They got a look, they have an end and their outside linebacker. This kid's head up on our tackle. Okay, we're balanced here. So we're just gonna base him, kick out here, and then lead through. We call this jet power, but there's no backside puller. It's it's probably yeah, it's more so ISO. <laughs> so we're just gonna ISO this kid. It's ISO uh, with jet action, but um we call it jet power just so the kids know what's going inside. But yeah, this is this is pretty much ISO. But you can see they're aligned. Two stop jet sweep. They got a wide DN and they have an outside linebacker. They have two force players here. There's really no one accounting for C. And our counter away for our, our, our it's not counter, we call it it's buck sweep, but it's away from the jet motion, so we call it, you know, we, sometimes we call it counter, but technically it's buck, which is our counter play. But you can see they got two two force players here. So they're not accounting for this gap here. I would have liked us maybe to go away from the split end and run it here. But we really were attacking this kid. And you can see a lot of teams, they'll put their, you know, a, a speedster over our guards and try to shoot, which never works. But you want to commit two players in one gap pretty much. So be it. That's, that's great for us. But you could see how to motion. Like hard jet sweep action. Look at that. If Look his first step. is shuffle out. First step, shuffle out. We base him out. Motion takes care of him. Boom. We ISO him. Great play here. And this team's base alignment coming out here was a 5-3. They have five down linemen with their ends, you know, in that in that nine tech, taught to box, and there's this guy would be in the C gap. But we gutted them so much with jet sweep, they widened out. We saw that, so we run jet power. And if you look the first couple steps, this is jet sweep action. Only until he gets to the far side tackle. Then we're putting our foot in the ground, we're cutting it up. So the first couple of steps, man, this is jet sweep. This looks like jet sweep. 
And we just use his motion against them. Use the motion to influence them to widen. And blocks himself. It's a great play here. Our backside tackle doesn't get to the mic. Okay, he has no one inside, no one over. He's got to get free on this. Okay, if he can't get him, we would work back to this kid. He, he's got to get that safety. I don't know where our backside lineman. Okay, tight end did a good job. My, my far tackle is looking for this kid too. He needs to see he's blocked and continue to work to someone else. Backside blocking isn't good here. But um, you get the concept of calling the right play. Calling jet power on this to their where they have two wide players and their weaker player, that's doing my job of giving my kids the best chance of success with the play I'm calling. Okay? So there it is. Boom. Boom. Nice run there. Running back was small, but um, he was tough. He hung in there. Physical kid for his size. But, guys, that's just our three-pillar play calling strategy. And I'll end by saying.